covariance. So number two, we have a covariance. Now, as a student who passed very well this subject called quantitative analysis, quantitative analysis, quantitative analysis section four, you should be able to remember that covariance stands for shared variance. Shared variance. Anytime they talk of covariance, always remember the concept of shared. This co, of course, co has got a, a meaning. Common. It's common between securities. If, for example, you hear of a, a bad word like co-wife, it must be something common. So covariance is the shared variance. So if somebody wants you to get the covariance, cov, we shall be abbreviating it like that. If somebody wants you to get the covariance between X and Y, how will you get this covariance between X and Y? What you will do, you will come and give us the deviation, you will come and give us the deviation, the deviation of X, multiply this by deviation of Y times probability, times probability, and then you sum. So it's a common thing between two securities. So what we shall do is to take the deviation of the first one multiplied by the deviation of the second one because of the uncertainties, you must always incorporate the probabilities like that and then you sum. So then how do we get the deviation of X? To get the deviation of X, we normally take the actual return of X minus the expected return of X. That is the difference between the actual, this one here that doesn't have E, is the actual return of x minus expected return of x into into we have deviation of y deviation of y we have actual return of y minus expected return of y times the probabilities probabilities and then you will come and do what here you will come and sum so using the question that we had i want us to populate come up with a table where we shall be able to put all the values that we have the actual returns of x you can see them here you can see them here they are very visible actual returns of x you can see 10 and what year 15 you can see 10 and 15 so the actual returns of x here we have 10 15 minus expected returns of x you are the ones who gave me expected returns of x from Roman 1 above, expected return of X, we found a figure of 13. So expected return doesn't keep on dancing, dancing between the outcomes. So expected returns, regardless of the actual outcome here, expected return will be the same. So we have in this case here, my brackets. I'm basically following this formula. We have our brackets here, go to the Y. So first of all, we start with the actual returns of Y. Actual returns of Y, we have 18 versus 24. Minus, minus, expected returns of Y. Expected returns of Y, you gave me a figure of 21.6. So it will be 21.6 for both outcomes. Times uh, probabilities also, which we shall use the ones that we are given there, 0.6 and 0.4 and 0.6. So here you have to be very, very careful. Use your brackets very well. Using your calculator, you simply open brackets. Say 10 minus 13, you close, times, open again, 18 minus 21.6, close, times 0.4. And then you give me an answer here, somebody. So somebody give me a figure. Four point three two. Yes, 4.32 is correct. 4.32 is correct. How about the second uh, scenario? Second scenario, just know how to use your calculator nicely. You simply press there, open brackets, 15 minus 13 close times open, 24 minus 21.6 close times 0.6. Give me a figure. 2.88. Uh, 2.88 is correct. From my book here, I can see 2.88 very well. So of course, after you get uh, the, these values from the two scenarios, now you are required as per the formula, you come and sum them. So summing, I just confirm whether you'll be able to see a figure of 7.2 and I'm not able to hear Vincent. Cynthia, are you able to get 7.2? Yes. So this 7.2 stands for what year? The 7.2 is now our cover, is our covariance between the two securities.